Hello, good afternoon. <laughs> Hello, good afternoon, and thank you for still hanging on um, and, and being here. Um, and thank you to Julian for giving me this opportunity. Um, the night that Julian asked me if I wanted to um, take part in Jib Talks, I was actually on, um, I was on a plane in Malaga on my way to Barcelona. Um, and I was literally on the runway and I remember receiving the message and telling Julian, yes, yes, I'm really interested, but look, if I don't answer, it's because my plane is leaving. Um, you know, and that's how it went. My plane left, I landed in Barcelona and Julian had replied that, you know, um, it was confirmed I was taking part um, in Jib Talks. And that same day, I had actually landed um, in Gibraltar from India, because as some of you may know, I went to India to represent Gibraltar in the Commonwealth Youth Parliament. And at the time I thought, I'll talk about this. Um, but for me, I had this feeling, no, like this momentous thing. The reason why I was going back to Barcelona was because, oof, I'm going to choke off. <laughs> I was packing up my life there. I had spent over two years. Um, and for me, I thought this would be a great opportunity to explain the lessons that I've learned uh, whilst being out there. So just to explain a little bit about myself, I'm 25 years old, um, I spent almost seven years out of Gibraltar and the, the largest part of that I was studying, but I also worked as a journalist um, this summer in Barcelona. And uh, to set the context of what made, what, uh, why I decided to move there, I was in my last year at Kingston University and Brexit had just happened, the referendum, and I remember getting there and I tell my tutor, look, I want to do my dissertation on Brexit and the future um, of Gibraltar. And he tells me, look, this is really recent, um, all the deadlines are changing, we don't know what's going to happen, it's, it's really hard to do something like this. I told him, oh, look, I look at the history and, and I'll be able to do it, trust me, I, I'll do it. And, and this tutor, who I'm still in contact with today, actually becomes then an expert on Gibraltar, because obviously he has to read up to be able to mark my work at the end of it. And that's when I kind of get the first taste of, wait, we have a voice and, and we can explain the story of, of Gibraltar. No? Uh, so I finished my degree and I realized that I want to do a master's, um, but I'm done with being in London. It's too cold. It gets dark too quickly. And at that time, uh, my partner, uh, who's Catalan, is living in, in Barcelona. We met in London, but he's back there. So I thought this is a good opportunity to move to Barcelona and, and Try it out there, no? Um, so this is what I do. I move there and I've literally just about unpacked and a colleague uh, from GBC gets in contact with me. Because uh, Sorry, this is September 2017. So my colleague from GBC calls me, say, uh, look, GBC is in Barcelona. We want to cover the lead up to the referendum. This is end of September. Uh, do you want to do an interview? It's like, yeah, yeah, for sure. And I call my mom. Mom, I'm doing an interview for GBC. Eh, niña, arreglate, eh? Like, you know, so you know, I get in. I, I, I meet, <laughs> um, I meet, I meet the reporter in, in Barcelona in a really nice plaza in the Gothic Quarter, very near the port, and he's asking me a series of questions, and one of the last questions is, uh, today is Wednesday, on Sunday the, elec the referendum is being celebrated, do you think it's going to get violent? And I went in there really naive, obviously, and I, that's, that's still recorded. I was going to show you, but I thought, no, I'll better just tell you. But it's, it's on record, me saying to GBC, uh, no, I, you know, there, there's tensions, but it's not going to get violent. People are simply going out to, to vote, to exercise a democratic vote. They're right, no? Um, so, yeah. So this is Wednesday. On Friday, I have the first day um, in, in, in my new university and I'm studying a master's in political science, and hindsight is a beautiful thing, no? And I get there the first day, and this teacher, what I mistook for crazy eyes, was actually a little bit of fear in her eyes, and she looked at us because my class, we were, 20, we were 32 students uh, from th 27 different nationalities, right? And she looked at us and she was like, look, uh, next week, I don't know what's going to happen, access to campus, maybe, you know, it might be hard to get here, and, and we all, everyone's looking at her like, what? Like, it'll be fine, it'll be fine. So this is Friday. Sunday comes around, the 1st of October, and I don't think I have to explain to, to anyone what happened that day, the images uh, were clear on the TV, and we wake up, you know, um, my partner and friends of mine were going to go out and vote, and people who genuinely were not going to go out and vote, switched on the TV that morning, saw what was happening, 
got dressed and went to vote because this is the reaction from something that had been building up slowly, all of a sudden it almost like explodes in the face. And I've been there for about two weeks. So like, what on earth is happening? I'm getting calls from my family, from my friends. Don't go out, stay home. It's like, okay, chill, chill. Like I'm here, I can see it with my own eyes. It's, it's not the end of the world. But what what begins to happen is that uh, <sighs> You, s you begin to see how people start to mobilize, no? and everything was, everything was shut down. There was general strikes, and from the point of view of a political analyst, like, it's incredible. And I was there and seeing, like, I'm watching history being made. Um, when I first moved to, to uh, Catalonia, I didn't speak any Catalan. I could understand some words. But believe you me, within the first month of being there, it was so tense and there was so much news going on that by the end of October, I could understand Catalan, yeah, like, perfectly. <laughs> so it's the 27th of October, we're having lunch at home, me and my partner, we're watching the news and the president is going to address the nation. What does he have to say? And all of a sudden, we're having lunch and he declares the republic for eight seconds. So me and my partner were living in the Republic of Catalonia uh, without really knowing what's happening next. And then he retracts his statement. So, OK, now what is really going on? No? We're like, <laughs> yes, I, I no cuadra something. So, so anyway, um, I start going to demonstrations because I want to see how people are being um, mobilized and Catalonia is truly transforming. Um, th these people are mobilization experts and I want to mention that they do it in such a peaceful way. Uh, Catalonia starts to be turns yellow. No, yellow is the color that they use to to side with um, to w what was happening, um, and and that's amazing to see on one side. But on the other side, you can't ignore that there's this division that is starting to grow, and it's and it's sad. No, so you get to the end of 2017, and in the short space of two months, um, Catalonia is fractured. There's imposed Spanish rule. They no longer have um, the autonomous the the autonomy to to as a region. No? Um, and, and Spain, you're left with Mariano's Rajoy Pepe ya, on its last legs. So, you know, there's this fascination as well that comes on how is this being, um, being covered by the media? You know, the, the EU doesn't want to get involved. There's politicians in, in prison. People are genuinely really upset. And without getting too political, no, but to highlight the main point of, of what I'm going to get to is that you have to stand up at least for the democratic values and accept that on the side of the castle independence, not all, but there was a part who had been pushing for dialogue this whole time. And, and they're really starting to be pushed up against the wall. So it's around May 2018 that I decide again, I, I'm not done with understanding how the world works, how politics works, how communication works. And my struggle is that I don't understand why political scientists keep searching for the why, but not necessarily on how we can make these changes. So I sit down with my parents. At this point, I know I'm not going to get another grant. And <laughs> I come back from, uh, <coughs> I come from a hum humble background. I'm the first to graduate from my nucleus of family. I have very clever cousins who all graduated as well. But in my nucleus, no, um, my brother has, has learning difficulties. So for my parents at this point, they're putting all the eggs in this basket for me to do well. No? So I go on the hunt, and, and I'll be back with a really good idea. Dad, I promise. This is like, you know, I have to do this. So I go on the hunt, I call my parents back. I found a course, international political journalism, everything encompassed in one, Ooh, you know? <laughs> it, it had taken me five years to get there, but you know, I had felt like I'd built all this background to finally get there and said, this is it. So my dad, my mom, uh, yeah, okay, look, it's in Barcelona, I don't have to move again. There's just one thing, it's what? It's in Spanish. So my dad, my dad is my number one fan, but he don't, look, it's in Spanish, but uh, okay, you, you can speak Spanish, I know, but another thing is to go and study, study in Spanish. So it's okay, I say, Dad, I can do it, and I start over the summer, no, I'm reading all my books in Spanish, and in around September, I start to get the emails, you know, you have to enroll soon, and all these emails are coming in, you know, really HR, like admin focus, and thank God for my partner, okay, I tell him, can you help me understand what the email's asking for, because I don't know how I'm gonna do this. So anyway, the day, one day before uni, there's a, there's a, um, there's a demonstration to, uh, uh, to commemorate the one year since the referendum. And this is not the demonstrations that we saw a few months ago. This is a year before. No? So around October um, 2018, I head down to a demonstration and everything is, is, is as normal as it, see, as, as it had been. No? 
until the moment that the politicians yeah, come out on stage to speak. And at this point, it's the first demonstration that I've been to where there's actually calls uh, for resignation for the president, for the interior minister of Catalonia. And it's also the first time that when, uh, when um, present, um demonstration is called off, people actually linger. Because like I said, they had a very good way of mobilizing that when it was done, everyone would go home. But this specific date, people started to linger, uh, you know, it, it got dark, the sun went down, the tension was building, and there was some point where I realized, okay, even though I can identify a lot with what's happening here and understand the struggle, it's not the same thing, it's, it's not my battle. And not that I'd been fighting it as my battle, but you almost have to take a step back and start to see things for, for what they really are, no? Um, so anyway, <coughs> gonna grab some water. Uh, <laughs> so I arrived to the first day of uni, and I had felt comfortable because the leader, um, sorry, the, the head of, of the guy leading the masters was English. So I had emailed him and told him, look, you know, I don't think I'm going to be able to write everything in Spanish. Is it okay to do some stuff in English? And he was like, yeah, yeah, that's fine. But it's fine until you get there and really you realize that, no, you signed up for a course in Spanish. Everyone's talking in Spanish and all the work is being done in Spanish. So, <laughs> so I get there and there's 13 classmates. One Chinese guy, one Venezuelan girl, and the rest all from Spain. From Malaga to Valencia, Girona, Euskadi, Galicia, Zaragoza, Valladolid, and then there's me. You know, and with this Gibraltarian mindset of, you know, we enjoy the same food and the same music and aspects of our culture and we share a family, but at the same time, we're not the same. And you know, that's right, it's 100%, that's right, we're not the same. But there's also a part that we have to accept. In all my years of being away, I've never been so comfortable. First of all, I didn't have to explain to anyone what a Gibraltar was. Because everyone knew, you know, we're all from the same peninsula. Either they had been here, everyone had an anecdote, or like my friend Paula, who still remembers when she came down to Jib at six years old and couldn't cross the border because her mum didn't pack a passport. So, you know, she's still like, she's still, uh, she's still not over it. And uh, in my class, we were 10 girls and three, and three guys, all very open-minded to debate. And there was definitely more that united us than divided us. Um, we attended the Women's March together, which saw over one million people in, 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 in the streets of Barcelona. And basically, within a month of starting, I'd very much become the class trumpet on anything and everything related to Britain, Brexit, and most importantly, Gibraltar. And, um, you know, this had been my biggest fear, starting and thinking that I wasn't going to be able to explain myself properly. Um, but that didn't matter because my classmates didn't care. In fact, they helped me improve. And within a couple of months, my Spanish had gone, you know, well, miles better. And, I always, and then I found that in every uni that I've been to, I've always been told, you sound like a government representative, because I always speak about Gibraltar and Brexit, you know? And I tell them, well, look, it's not my fault. It's that here, at least we have a unified idea of what our international relations should look like, no? So here I'm faced with the opportunity to explain the issues of Gibraltar um, to, to a group of people that I thought genuinely were not going to be interested. And it's not until just before Christmas that a, that a teacher who um, comes in to teach us and he begins to use Gibraltar as an example to explain the conflict between China and Taiwan. And in the class, one Gibraltarian and one Chinese guy, and we all start smirking between each other, and one of my <laughs> classmates shout out, hey, I'd be careful if I was you, and the teacher, very apologetic, no, I wasn't going to say anything offensive, and it's true because he wasn't, but he was going to explain the situation in a very cold manner, in the same way that when us people interested in politics, or anyone for that matter, sits down. For example, I remember when uh, Juan Guaido self-proclaimed himself president last year in Venezuela. We all got there that day as if we knew what was happening, and my Venezuelan friend was like, actually, that's not like that, no? So what I found was that through dialogue, months of going back and forth, of, um, the opportunity to explain this situation, we're able um, to basically, well, see I'm looking at the time and seeing that I'm really running out. <laughs> so basically for this time I realized that through dialogue we're really able to um, spread this message. No, and I'm asked to do a documentary and I decide to do it on the 50 years since the border has closed. I come back, I interview the chief minister, I use um, footage from the archives, and what this leads to is that by the end of it, they ask me if, please, can they use this documentary to show future um, classes, not just my course, but other courses related to politics, related to journalism. And for me, if 
I'm just, I was just happy enough that it was a Gibraltarian telling Gibraltar's story to a crowd that was mostly Spanish, and if that's all I've managed to achieve, I'm happy. But I'm not naive either, okay? And I don't want you to think that. In January, we traveled to Madrid. I'm really going to go over. <laughs> In January, we traveled to Madrid with my course, and I traveled to the Spanish Foreign Ministry, El Cano Real Institute, which is basically a think tank, and both places mentioned Jib without me even saying that I'm from Gibraltar, and I'm really feeling overwhelmed because this feeling of not being able to you know, argue back because we're there on, a, on, on an institutional, vi on institutional visit and it's not a place, a forum f uh, for debate. And it's not until we get to the Agencia F, um, which is, you know, this massive building, the center of like where all the news is, is being focused and coming out of Spain. And there's a huge story on display about Gibraltar. And at this point is when my teacher turns to me and says, <laughs> he's like, Al final resulta de verdad. Gibraltar es el ombligo del mundo. And basically, so I, in the end, you're right. Gibraltar is the belly button of the world. And I said, look, Albert, I know we're here in Madrid and Jib should not have to factor into this, but we're everywhere. It's relevant everywhere. So the point is, Jib is relevant. And how do we navigate this in a positive way? No? A week after Madrid, I meet this politician. Um, he had been in Pesoy, then Ciudadanos. Now he's retired. He's also a lawyer and a journalist, you know, one of man, many talents. And, um, you know, after the p I'm there as a guest at the press conference, I can't ask questions because I'm a student. And at the end, he's looking at me like, well, who are you? No. So I stand up, I say, look, I'm Ijana. Um, and um, somebody from the EU who had arranged it, I said, no, she's, she's British. And he came up to me, he was so upset that Britain was leaving the EU, the EU until he realized that I was Gibraltarian and said, oh, well, you know, you still have a way of saying in the EU, no? And again, in that moment, I'm just standing there like, <laughs> So, yeah, so, so at this point, I really start to think to myself, how do we navigate this dialogue? There's two things, two problems, and there's two spades. One is the institutions which have the perfected response, and the other is the people that are willing to listen. You have to come to terms with you're not going to change everyone's mind. But how can I best pre prepare myself? I want to be a journalist, but I also have this responsibility as being Gibraltarian. Um, and a week before we go to Brussels, the EU, NATO, the Spanish embassy in Brussels, no, I see this politician again. It was total coincidence and I, I see him again. And anyway, um, and I'm not going to pretend that I turned into the superhero and answered with this perfect response. But after Gibraltar did come up again, I, I said to him, look, have you traveled to the area recently? On what authority do you speak? Because it's so easy to fall into, the into this rhetoric, especially now after Brexit. But the solution to our issue is a political one, reached through dialogue. That, that's uh, at least in my opinion. And that's not to say we don't stand up and defend what we believe in, but the solution is sought through dialogue. And the relevance of Catalonia, but that the solution is the same. I know you're all thinking, but it's them that don't want a dialogue, and yes. But what about the percentage of people that are willing to listen? I know they're out there. You know, yesterday I spoke to press outside number six, and I went back later on in the evening and looked at the reports. Not all of them are negative. There is a genuine interest in what's going to happen in Gibraltar and El Campo de Gibraltar after Brexit. And I learned this year that the world of political communication is very closely linked. One of my teachers is waiting for his trial to begin for his role in an involvement in the Catalan process. And another teacher of mine became the de facto president of Omnium Cultural when its president was put in prison. Um, so it's not evil, all evil people pulling the strings. No? There are genuine journalists who would like to work on the true story. And we don't achieve that by creating barriers or, or pretend that, you know, also here we don't have an interest in what happens over there. And I swear, I'm nearly done, Julian. <laughs> and I suppose <laughs> that the point is that going forward, we must continue to build bridges of dialogue. And not just in Spain, but beyond. As the Brexit generation, oh, I think that's what we'll be known as, we owe it to our past generations who have suffered and worked so hard to guarantee the freedoms that we enjoy here in Gibraltar that we continue to do the same and pave the way for Gibraltar in this world in a diplomatic manner and through education. Because the why of our issues has already been solved. It's how we are going to navigate this journey that now needs to be answered. In my opinion, thank you very much for still being here. And thank you. <laughs> thank you.